Does this ever happen to you? This lightweight, life-saving device is just uh, too hard to put on. Well, look no further than the late 1980s. Believe it or not, seat belts were not always fashionable, especially the closer and closer you get to their original conception. Some late 1980s and early 1990s cars had a remedy for these issues, to automate them. They didn't stick around for long, and they never really caught on. Why was that? Well, let's talk about it. While the seatbelt itself was first pioneered in the late 1800s by George Cayley for use in his glider, Dr. C. Hunter Sheldon is credited with the idea of retractable seatbelts in automobiles, which he came up with in 1946. Dr. Sheldon was a neurosurgeon in Pasadena, California, and noticed the massive amount of patients he had entering his practice with head injuries from motor collisions. Dr. Sheldon also proposed recessed steering wheels, reinforced roofs, roll bars, automatic door locks, and even an early concept of an airbag. But maybe that's for another video. Nash was the first company to offer belts in their vehicles in 1949. They were installed in approximately 40,000 cars, of which approximately 39,000 customers asked the dealers to remove them before purchase. No one wanted seat belts. Ford offered them six years later in 1955, but only 2% of buyers actually purchased the seat belts. Just like Nash had learned half a decade earlier, no one wanted them. Saab was the first company to make safety belt standard equipment in their 1958 Saab GT750. However, these were all lap belts. The more modern three-point belts were patented in June of 1955 by Americans Roger W. Griswold and Hugh DeHaven. Here are the patent documents that look less like a monumental innovation and more like diagrams from a murder mystery podcast. Creepy. Volvo was also working on a similar design. A Swedish electric utility company by the name of Vattenfall did a study on their workplace injuries. Their survey found that most of the injuries were caused on the road between work sites in car accidents. Two engineers at Vattenfall developed a three-point seatbelt and presented their work to Volvo. Volvo loved the idea and made it a standard feature in their cars for the 1959 model year with the help of Niles Bolin. The inventors then investigated 28,000 automobile accidents under 60 miles an hour with both no seatbelts and their new three-point belts. Their findings were that as long as the passenger compartment remained intact, not a single accident was fatal with the three-point belt. This could not be said about the lack of belts in the vehicle. The cherry on top of all this? Volvo allowed other manufacturers to use their patent for free so that all vehicles could have this new, life-saving technology. Victoria, Australia was the first place to make a law requiring seatbelt use for the front driver and passenger in 1970, following a study of police vehicles fitted with belts resulting in fewer officer injuries. The United States followed in the 1980s, but it wasn't met without pushback. Interestingly, the hot rod community loved the idea of belts for their homemade sleds, often utilizing airplane belts like this 1966 Ford Mustang I reviewed. But in the eyes of the public, no. No one wanted to wear their seatbelt. It was uncomfortable, it was strange, and people felt as though it was their own choice whether they wear it or not. In protests, motorists would cut their seatbelts out of their cars or even challenge the laws in court. Take a look at the back of the Mazda RX-7 brochure. Interesting. But when does the power mechanism come into play? While Volkswagen is credited to having the first automatic seatbelt in their 1975 Volkswagen Golf, the Carter administration set a deadline for 1983 
saying that every vehicle must have automated seat belts or airbags by this year. This oncoming law jump-started multiple manufacturers to produce something to comply. Toyota introduced automatic seat belts in the 1981 Toyota Cressida. However, by the time they released the vehicle, the Reagan administration had taken office and they dropped the 1983 deadline completely. But the belts were already in motion. <laughs> what was originally meant to be the future of safety soon became a gimmick when they were no longer required like they were told they would be. I mean, look at them. They're so fun. They became a staple for the late 80s and early 90s. What you're seeing now is a 1991 Nissan 240SX. But what happened to them? Well, there are a few reasons that we no longer see automatic seat belts in cars. With the introduction of dual airbags in the 1990s and the federal law requiring them in 1997, there wasn't much of a need for the power belts. The airbags were safer and easier. But there was another bigger issue. They broke. Just like the pop-up headlights we talked about last video, anything motorized will break. Things gunk up the track and the slide can get jammed. When that happens, you no longer have a seatbelt, which is a huge problem. Mazda still has a factory recall on their power seatbelts for the Mazda RX-7, where still, to this day, you can go and get them serviced for free when they inevitably fail at your local Mazda dealer. So, that's it. Companies were told that they needed to create these automatic seatbelts to help the public comply with the new law. But then, overnight, they were no longer required, and the technology hung around for about a decade, but fizzled out because of mechanical failure and advancements in other tech. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have been enjoying my monthly video essay series on some 80s car quirks. I talked about 55 mile an hour speedometers. I talked about quartz clocks. I talked about pop-up headlights as well as third brake lights of which you can see at the end of this video and watch at your own discretion. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.